Welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome to a surprise Wednesday afternoon live stream. We are going to try an experiment or two this afternoon. We've got some new features from YouTube to try out. We'll tell you all about that momentarily. Uh, but in the meantime, we are also going to crochet a plushy version of our Amigurumi ghost. So before we get started, we have a free pattern for our crochet Amigurumi ghost available on our website. Mr. and Stitches will make sure that that link is posted in the live chat and also uh, later on it'll be down below in the description box. Actually it's probably already there but we'll make sure that it's up top. It's on the pattern workshop page. If you scroll down that pattern workshop page you'll look for this photograph. This is our little Amigurumi ghost photo and then right underneath it will be the link you click on that has the PDF file attached to it. So this is the little guy we're going to be making. Now normally when we make him, he winds up at about four and a half inches tall or 11, just a little under 11 and a half centimeters tall. And that's because we usually make our amigurumi using a size four medium weight yarn and a smaller hook, like a, a G6, like a four millimeter, 4.2, five millimeter. That's so we have nice tight stitches. You can't see the stuffing through the spaces and um, it's just cute. Amigurumi are typically small, but if you upsize the yarn, and I have a ball of that Bernat blanket yarn here, this nice plushy white stuff. This is considered a size six, super bulky. Um, it's that nice plushy polyester blanket yarn. I've got a ball of that. And if you upsize your hook, so I'm gonna use an eight millimeter. This is also known as an L or an 11. Then you don't have to change the pattern. It just naturally gets bigger. So I thought it might be kind of fun to make a, this will probably wind up being about six inches tall, which I just think is like the cutest, softest, plushiest version of a little Amigurumi ghost with a sweet little smile on his face. Other things you're gonna to wanna to use are a pair of scissors and a yarn needle uh, or a wool needle like this one that's got a nice big eye that you can get your yarn through if you're gonna be weaving in your ends. Uh, when it's something this big, there's not a lot of weaving in, but there will be a little bit of stitching. Um, I've got some black yarn here for a couple of reasons. One, I wanna embroider a little mouth on him. And two, you can use uh, beads or big buttons, even safety eyes for the eyes on this project. Um, we used buttons on the original one, but I'm actually gonna, try my hand at just crocheting some simple round discs for the eyes. Um, we've got a photograph. Mr. and Stitches probably has it up there on the screen for you. So that's a close-up of the little original one we made. And uh, that's a free pattern. So if you want to grab the free pattern, print it off, you can make some notes on it to make the large plushy version that we're going to do today. So in terms of how much yarn you're going to need, um, I'm going to guess that we really only used 40 yards of the size four medium weight when we made the original one. I'm going to guess maybe double that. So up upwards of a hundred yards, you probably won't need that much, but because size six bulky weight is a thicker, heavier yarn, um, I'm going to gauge about a hundred yards. So you shouldn't need that much, but that's, it's better to have overage. Um, I've got way, way more than I need in this ball of yarn here. Um, and then just a tiny amount of black yarn if you're going to use that for the facial features. A couple of big eyes, safety eyes, something like that if you want. Or you can crochet some eyes along with me. And you're going to want stuffing. So I've got some other yarn here that is just taking up space. I don't think I'm going to use it for much. I've had this stuff for quite a long time. So I'm going to use this as the stuffing. I definitely will not need all of it, but I'm gonna use this as the stuffing for my plushie. If you wanted it to be super soft and light and airy, then uh, polyester fiber fill, that puff pillow stuffing, is the perfect stuffing for this. You can also use um, cotton swabs <laughs> or scrap fabric. Those make good stuffing options too. So, um, you're also going to want a smaller hook for your black yarn. This is a medium size for regular weight yarn, and I'm going to use a smaller hook, um, you know, five millimeter, 4.5 millimeter, whatever you want, something small, just to make the eyes, if you're going to make eyes along with me, but we'll get to that later. So that's what we're going to need. We're going to be following along our original pattern. I'm going to be using the blanket weight yarn and the bigger hook to get this to upsize without having to change the project so that I'm going to go from little amigurumi to plushy. 
Uh, Mr. and Stitches is here. I'm sure you've seen him kind of doing a little bit of techie stuff. And um, we will be trying an experiment. Uh, but before I tell you about the experiment, I want to thank Nico <laughs> for gifting a membership before we got the stream going today. And uh, congratulations to Sandy for winning it. Welcome back to the family, Sandy. Um, Nico's <laughs> super supportive. And we're going to have some fun with this little ghost. So, a little sip of my water. Um, I'm going to start going. Now, you're probably wondering what the experiment is that I was talking about. So here we go. Uh, YouTube has been pushing us to put ads in the middle of our live streams. And this is something that if you ever watch anybody on Twitch, they often do this. They run an ad during a live stream. Well, we thought we would try and take the opportunity to do a little bit of a 1980s TV throwback thing. So if you remember, You'd be perched on the couch and when the TV ads come on, you'd use that opportunity to jump up, <laughs> run to the kitchen, run to the bathroom, you know, go go grab your homework or whatever it was you wanted a break from the activity that you were watching. Uh, you would use that. You knew you had like a one or two minute break to kind of run off and do all that. So we've opted to try and do manual placements of ads. We're going to try and take a 60 second ad break. We know not everybody's going to see an ad. Not everybody's going to see the same ad. And not everybody would be the see the same length ad. So we have absolutely no idea how this is going to go. That's why it's an experiment. We are going to wait a good 30 minutes before we try it so we can really get into the project together. And by that point, we'll be up and running. You know, you'll have, you should have like the paper in front of you, maybe the free pattern, or you've kind of, you're working on your stitches. You know where we are in the project. So when we opt to do this ad experiment, it won't be super interruptive and we were we're going to ask for feedback. We want to know exactly what everybody saw, what happened, because um, we have no idea how this is going to go. So this is sort of a fun little experiment, but that is for about 30 minutes down the road. And Mr. and Stitches will let us all know when it's coming. Um, and I... Hello, everybody. <laughs> Okay. And we'll see how it goes. Okay, great. So everyone, if you have to go to the washroom, just hold it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're... Only minutes. Mm -hmm. Mandy is asking if she can use double strands of a size four yarn. I would say absolutely. Um, you could try two strands of a size five yarn, maybe three strands of a size four yarn. Um, and that will sort of size up to be roughly the size of, a, of this blanket weight yarn. So three strands of a medium size four or two strands of a size five. Um, but there isn't really any uh, gauge that you have to worry about. You just need to worry about pairing up the hook with your yarn to make sure that you get nice tight little stitches that you can't see through the spaces. So um, size six bulky weight yarn, one strand, size five chunky weight yarn, two strands, or size four medium weight yarn, three strands, and the L or eight millimeter hook is what I recommend. We are gonna start with a cinch circle. So let me just put this to the side. And once you've chained one to create your circle, and if you're using this blanket yarn like I am, I saw somebody mentioned um, they're gonna give it a go with the velvet yarn. It's kind of similar, but I think it's a little slippier, slipperier than this blanket yarn. Using bulky weight yarn, especially using this blanket weight yarn, I can't move my hook as fast. It's kind of like grabby, sticky. Um, so adjust yourself and your tension accordingly. You might find that you have to move a little slower. Maybe you'll find you can move a little faster. Uh, so don't be surprised if it feels a little different than it normally does. We are going to work eight single crochet into this cinch circle. Remember, you're working over top of that little short tail because that's what we're going to use to cinch it shut. And a, another reminder, if you're using this sticky kind of blanket weight yarn uh, or blanket yarn that I'm using, um, it's going to be a little grabby. So when you try to cinch that circle shut, it's going to feel a little uh, more difficult to cinch than it might otherwise. Uh, so be prepared for that. Oh, really? You don't think your microphone is working? Yeah. Okay, so that's eight single crochet. 
Um, very quickly, I just saw Robin. Robin's probably just popped in. What hook? Size 8 millimeter hook, also known as an L or an 11, or the hook that you can get the best stitch size and tension with the yarn you're using. So I'm using an 8 millimeter. Um, but if you have like really loose tension, you might want to go down to a, a, like a K hook, uh, which would be a six and a half millimeter or a seven millimeter. If you've got super tight tension, you might want to go up to a nine. That's fine too. Once you've got your eight single crochet in that little cinch circle, grab that short tail, cinch it shut, nice and tight. And a reminder, we're following our free Amigurumi ghost pattern. So we're not changing the pattern. We're just changing up the thickness of the weight, uh, yarn weight and the hook size so we can get a nice plushy. Uh, by not changing the pattern. So I'm starting right here, ghost body. We just finished row one, make a cinch circle, eight single crochet into the circle, cinch tightly shut. Here we are. We are not joining our rows because we are working in the round. So that means that we are going to work directly into the first stitch of what was row one to start row two. You might find having a stitch marker is handy when you're working in the round. So let me just grab a stitch marker here. So a stitch marker is uh, useful when working in the round because you can mark your first stitch of the row with it and then you have to worry less about counting um, and you just sort of focus on the pattern you're working because you'll know when you get back around to the beginning. So uh, we will use a stitch marker for that. Okay, looks like I managed to fix my mic. You got it going? Uh-huh. Okay, great. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. So if it's working... Um, yes. I'm not sure why this happens, but every once in a while, the software defaults um, some equipment to, to a different setting. <laughs> it, and it's just totally random. So it had changed my microphone setting to something else. I, I don't know why that happens. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's completely random. Okay, uh, for row two, we are going to work two single crochet into each stitch all the way around. We're going to start by working two right into that first stitch. I'm also going to work over top of my, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm not going to work over top of my short tail. I don't have to. I can just leave it on the inside because this is a little stuffed toy. So it'll just act as stuffing on the inside. After I work the first two stitches, I go back and I mark the first stitch with my stitch marker so that I can A, see it a little easier because when you're working with this plushy yarn, it's not always easy to see all the stitches, but I'll know that's my first stitch back there so that when I continue to focus on working two single crochet in every stitch, I don't have to focus as hard on how many times I've done that because I'll know when I get back here that this will be the last place I work two single crochet. Uh, and we'll go from an eight stitch count at the end of row one to 16 stitches at the end of row two. And I'm going to try and make sure that I have relatively tight stitches. I don't want to be too tight because I don't want it to um, like, you know, like turn into like a little. I don't want the ends to roll up like the feet on a dead spider. How's that sound for a Halloween reference? <laughs> so I'm going to take nice, take it nice and easy here, making sure that I've got two single crochet worked into every single stitch all the way around. Um, and I noticed you were, where everybody's kind of chit-chatting about um, the, the experiment we're going to try. If you are a YouTube premium member, we are. So we don't see ads. Um, but if you are a premium member, you probably won't see an ad. So again, we're not sure how this is going to look. We're not sure what people are going to see instead. This is entirely an experiment and uh, we're always kind of always happy to try an experiment because it's kind of kind of fun. Uh, when we do longer live streams, I do sometimes want to, you know, have the ex excuse to jump up and run and get a, gl a glass of water or something. And I remembered that when I was little and I would sit and watch TV, I would always wait for the commercial break to go and do that. So <laughs> we're going to give that a go today. That is the end of row two. We've got 16 stitches and let's go back to our pattern here. So that's the end of row two. In row three, we are going to continue to increase. We're going to go from 16 stitches up to 24. So we're going to work the pattern two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the stitch after that. Repeat that eight times in total. It looks like this. Two single crochet to start the row in that first stitch. 
Then I'm going to mark my first stitch of the row with my stitch marker, just so it's easier to keep track of where I am. I'm going to give myself some, free up some yarn here. Then it's one single crochet into the next stitch, and then we repeat two into the next, one into the next, two into the next, one into the next. Caroline with a membership milestone. Caroline's been a member for 38 months. Thank you so much, Caroline. Caroline says, Amigurumi with thick yarn might be easier on the hands. You know what? It might be. If you find it's easier to grip a larger, um, oh my goodness gracious, Deborah, thank you so much. Deborah's picked up a pattern in our Etsy shop. If you find it easy to hold on to a larger hook, maybe to make bigger stitches, maybe you don't have to work so hard to, to you know, handle tiny little thread. This is quite nice, um, soft feeling stuff to, to work with. Um, it might be a little easier on the old hands. Sometimes um, I enjoy working with the blanket yarn, even though I have to maybe slow down a little bit. Uh, I don't find it difficult to work with. Uh, and after a while, you get kind of used to sort of seeing where your, your fluffy little stitches are supposed to be. So it's not that difficult. And working with it in a small project like this is a nice way, is a nice way to get used to working with blanket yarn if you've never dealt with it before. Plus, it makes the cutest little plushies. Another thing we want to mention about the ads, and just ads in general on YouTube, is that you see ads based on where you are. So for example, you could be watching the same show as anybody on the internet, but you will see ads that are hyper-localized to where you are. So for example, um, if you live in a small town in Western Massachusetts, Massachusetts you'll see maybe like a, 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 you might see an ad for a local store and nobody outside of, of that area would see that ad. We certainly wouldn't. Um, in Canada, we don't see American ads, and I'm, I'm sure Americans don't see Canadian ads. Uh, and it's the same thing depending on the country you're in. You're going to see, uh, you might see political ads where you are for, you know, if you happen to be in an area where there's a political campaign ramping up, you might see um, ads for an event coming on television where you are. It, the, you, you, we have no idea what you're going to see. So we're less interested in the kind of like what you're looking at in terms of ads, but the kind of ad you're going to see. So maybe it's going to be, you do see an ad, you don't see an ad. Maybe it's a, a quick skippable ad. Maybe it's a non-skippable 30 second ad. We have no idea what's coming because YouTube gets to decide all of that. Um, just like they do, you know, most of the time. So I'm working on just finishing off row three, my last set of two single crochet into the next stitch and then single crochet once into the stitch after that. That means I've done 24. That brings me all the way back around to my first stitch. I think I'm going to give myself a whole bunch of, of slack on the yarn here. Okay, so that was row three. Rows four through 11, we're just gonna single crochet in every single stitch around. So what we've done is we've just created the little rounded top part of his head, and now we're gonna just start crocheting in every single stitch all the way around for rows four through 11, and the stitch count doesn't change. It's 24 stitches all the way around. Um, I'm gonna to continue to use that, that little stitch marker because I find that it's, it's helpful. So now it's just one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. I like to give myself a little bit of breathing room so I've marked the first stitch of the row, and now I know I'm just working a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. This will probably um, still increase in uh, diameter a little bit. I find sometimes before, um, when I stop increasing and I just start working straight single crochet, I find sometimes that there's still a little bit of um, spreading out that occurs with the pattern. It doesn't always just immediately start turning itself into a bowl. So whether it does or it doesn't for you is perfectly fine because we are eventually going to have this thing turn into like a little, uh, kind of like a little cylinder.
So Sue says, why pay, why pay for premium if we get ads? Um, you might not get one. In fact, I don't think you will. If you, if you have a premium, uh, if you have a premium subscription to YouTube, you probably will not see an ad. So we really want to know what you see. <laughs> I want to know if you just end up sort of seeing the craft table, if um, if if something kind of pops up that says, you know, please stand by. We have no idea. This, like we said, is entirely an experiment. We don't know what's going to happen. The information was kind of lacking, so we thought we would give it a go with you guys because you guys give great feedback. Whenever we try something, we can always count on you guys to kind of give us a good description of like what you're seeing on the other side, you know, what, what you're experiencing, what happens. So uh, we're curious. That is the end of row four. I'm continuing to single crochet in each single stitch or each stitch all the way around. So I'm going to do work my first two single crochet the row, mark the first one. And now you can really see it like it's starting to curve down. It's already going to be so much bigger than the original one was probably only about that wide. And now this one's almost double that. So I am very keen to see how this one turns out. I kind of expected that it would be around six six and a half inches tall so like 15 centimeters maybe 16 centimeters but um we'll find out i like this little guy he's so he's so cute like a little friendly ghost <laughs> Welcome, welcome everybody. If you're just joining us, uh, surprise, we're having a little live stream. We're going to see how this goes today. We're doing a little experiment with some of the YouTube new features. More importantly though, we are working on a cute little plushy version of our Amigurumi Ghost. We have a free pattern for you all over on our website. It's on the Pattern Workshop page. We'll make sure that link, the link's up top. Um, Mr. and Stitches has it pinned up top in the chat. It'll also be pinned um, down in the description box afterwards. Just scroll down the page until you see this photograph, the one that Mr. Institches has got uh, on screen for you. And right underneath that, you'll see a little link you can click on. It'll say the name of the pattern plus PDF. It's a PDF file. Just click on that. It'll automatically download to whatever device you're using. And then you can print it off or you can, you know, use it any way you see fit. Um, I like to have um, paper backups for my patterns because I'm not always in a place where I have internet connection or even electricity. So uh, whenever I can get my hands on a paper version of a pattern, even the ones that I've written, I like to make sure I have the paper backup. And uh, if you're learning how to read patterns, then this is a great opportunity because we're going through this step by step, row by row, and you can sort of read along with us. And if you're making the plushy sized version of this pattern, then make sure you make some notes on the pattern. So you can sort of say, even, even like in the margins or on the back of the page, you can make comments about the size of the yarn you used, um, maybe the brand you used, the color, the hook size you went with, uh, what kind of stuffing you ended up needing, maybe estimate the amount of yarn you may have used. These are all really good things to include uh, in notes on a pattern so that if you ever go to make it again down the road, a lot of the thinking has already been done. You don't have to think your way through all of that for a second or third time. So let me see, I've just completed another row. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've completed six rows. I have rows seven through 11, so another four rows to go. And we've got a membership milestone from Deanna. Hello, Deanna. Deanna has been a member for four months. Thank you so much. And she says, my treat bag is taking forever in single crochet graphing. Oh yes, Deanna's making a really cool treat bag. Um, it's the question block uh, image from the Mario Brothers game. And it looks really cool. She shared a photo with me um, over on the Etsy shop. It looks incredible, but yes, I bet that's taking forever. Graph work, especially single crochet graph work, takes time. It also takes sort of attention. I find with single crochet, even with double crochet, you can get going so quickly that if you're not paying attention, you'll find yourself frogging a lot because you know, you've know you already crocheted 
way past where you should have changed colors or <laughs> I'm glad to hear that's coming along still. Nico has gifted yet another membership. Thank you so much, Nico. Vivi, Vivi has won it. Welcome back to the family, Vivi. <laughs> it's gonna look so cool when it's done. Deanna, your bag. I think that's gonna be really, really neat. And it's one of those things too that like is maybe kind of lives a little past Halloween. Like it's a funky bag, you know, you like it can be used outside of just for trick-or-treating. I'm starting the next row. I'm gonna keep marking that first stitch of the row just so I know that where I'm I don't now I'm not really increasing, so I don't have to worry too much about counting, but it is a nice reminder when I get around that I've completed yet another row. So sometimes I might stop and count to make sure that I don't work extra rows, because sometimes when I'm crocheting and chit-chatting with everybody, I get going kind of quickly. T you get minus, into that. Uh, T minus four minutes till the big scary experiment. Oh, okay. Just four warning minutes. everyone. T minus four minutes. Well, that's perfect because I'm going to use the opportunity. I think we'll take about a 60 second break in four minutes to try out this ad thing to see what happens. Um, you can use the chance to run off to the bathroom or do what I'm going to do. I'm going to zip into the kitchen and just refresh my drink. Um, and then we will continue with the other half of the little ghosty here. Could you do a little recap on what yarn you're using, hook size? Certainly. Uh, let me just finish this row and I will bring everybody up to speed. So if you're just joining us, we are making a plushy version of our Amigurumi ghost. We have a tutorial. We also have a free pattern over on our webpage, so please feel free to download it. It is, um, you know, happy to have the free patterns for everybody when we can. This was a, a freebie back in 2016. We made this. Um, usually we make this little amigurumi with a size four medium weight yarn, but today to make it a plushy, I'm using a size six plushy blanket weight yarn. So size six, super bulky. This is Burnett blanket yarn. Uh, eh, gonna need way less than a hundred yards, but I just said, have 100 yards just in case, but you're gonna need way less than that. I'm using an eight millimeter hook, also known as an L or an 11. You're gonna want some stuffing and a couple of big buttons, beads, safety eyes for the eyes, or you can do what I'm doing. I'm gonna crochet a couple. Um, and that's it. We're just kind of, we've, we'll also make sure that the original tutorial is linked down below. So if you want the Coles Notes version of the tutorial, uh, and you just wanna sub in the plushy yarn and the bigger hook, then that will be there for you too. And you can use that at your leisure. Cherry, Cherry's in the chat. Cherry with a membership milestone. Cherry's been a member for 40 months. My goodness, thank you, Cherry. Cherry says, hey, Ms. J and General G, ads at the end. <laughs> yeah, I think there would be an ad at the end anyway. I'm not sure if you if the the stream just finishes and you're still kind of watching it, you might also get an ad. Not sure. Again, we're uh, we're not sure, but we're gonna try this 1980s commercial break thing. I, I the only thing I wish is that we could have like, um, like some funky uh, 1980s like ad music playing for anybody who doesn't actually see the ad. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna Let's put all my... go to the lobby, Let's like one of those things. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the <laughs> lobby and get ourselves a snack. I like that. I miss that little tune. I'm gonna finish this row and I'm gonna count, see where I'm at, because I've already forgotten my row count. Good thing I'm using my little stitch marker here. There we go. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've got two more rows to go. That feels about right. So I'll work the first two stitches of the row. Put my little stitch marker back on. Desiree, I love it. If you make a mistake, you can literally call it a boo-boo. <laughs> I just love little, I, I love making amigurumi. I love little stuffed toys, but I especially love like little Halloween figures and little Christmassy figures and um, just, you know, anything that's kind of quirky and cute and small. Um, I feel like 
when you take a, a, a simple amigurumi pattern, like our little ghosty here, and you upsize it with the blanket weight yarn and the bigger hook, it's it almost feels like cheating. You get to make a, a decent plushy sized little toy. It doesn't take very long. It doesn't take up much um, yarn or materials or stuffing or anything. And then you're left with this just absolutely adorable little gift, basically. You, I mean, obviously you can keep it yourself, but it's just such a fun way to use up some scrap yarn and it's a pick-me-up, you know, it's the kind of thing that, that really cheers somebody up. If you don't get that many kids coming for um, trick-or-treating, um, if you're in a place that does trick-or-treating or if you yourself, you know, put the, put the candy out. Um, if you don't get that many kids, like in the last few years, we've barely had anybody. Sometimes it's fun to just give out something like this. It's a, it really makes it sort of special. All right, we're past 30 minutes, so we're going to give this thing a try. All right. And um, we appreciate appreciate everyone's feedback. So So we're going to, Mr. and Stitches is going to hit the button. We don't know what's going to happen, but we are taking a 60-second break. I am going to go to the kitchen and get myself a glass of water and sort of see what happens. So a second something starts to happen, please just start filling in the information in the chat or take a break yourself. We'll be right back. All right, so we're just going to give it a few more seconds. So if anybody is seeing something sort of long or weird or something they can't skip, then we don't want anyone to feel like they've missed out. We also don't know if there's a time delay. Like, for example, if you might see something longer than the next person, but when it comes back to the live stream, you're, you're getting the DVR. You're getting sort of the extended, like you're not missing anything. You're just seeing it a little bit later than everybody. We don't know. Um... Okay, thanks for the feedback, everyone. I can see everyone's comments here. It looks like it, it's a complete mixed bag of okay. what people saw or didn't see. Um, so we'll go through all the all of this afterwards. Okay. Might as well continue with the tutorial. Great, that's fantastic. So some yes, some no. We will break down the feedback a little bit later. Thank you guys for participating in our little experiment. <laughs> And uh, let's get back to it. So I'm just going to count up my rows. I need 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I have one more row to go. I just worked the first two stitches of that row and put my stitch marker in. So I'm finishing my last row of single crochet. This is straight single crochet. Um, so if you were at this point working along with me, then I guess you could also have used that little experimental break to sort of see, um, kind of catch up a little bit or finish up your single crochet to the end of the 11th row like I'm doing. Oh, I'm already in love with this. This is just so cute. I love making little plushies out of this blanket yarn. Who knew? It's so easy to upsize a little pattern just by using bigger yarn and a bigger hook. Uh, but I do struggle a bit with this. I am curious if you guys use this blanket polyester blanket yarn, do you find you struggle with it? I do. I have to work a little bit harder to get those stitches to kind of to pull my hook through the stitches. Um, does anybody else find that?
There we go. Okay, so I've just finished row 11. And if we go back and look at our pattern here. It says even at the end of row 11 to match the beginning point of row 1. So this is where you would single crochet into the next three stitches. This doesn't actually change your stitch count, but here's the beginning and ending of the row. And here is where row one turns into row two. So this little bump right here. And if you trace it all the way up the side, you'll see that you're about three stitches back. That's because when you're increasing in the round, your row starts to stop and um, start a stitch back with every row of, with every, every time you increase, every successive row will start and stop a stitch further away from where your initial uh, little row one turning into row two is. So evening it up doesn't change the stitch count. It just basically evens up the flat bottom of your circular thing. Uh, we are going to slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. So that's the next stitch, slip stitch, fasten off. Um, I just saw a quick note from uh, Marie, it looked like someone. This could be commonly experienced from a lot of people. Um, if you have a membership, so if you're a member of a channel like our channel and you're logged into YouTube and you don't see um, your membership status, you can go to our channel web page, or I should say our channel homepage, and click on the membership tab and it'll tell you all you need to know about membership. So whether you're, uh, you're, you're currently a member, how long you've been a member, when your membership um, renews. If you are certain that you're a member because you see it renewing on say your credit card, but it's not showing um, immediately when you, you're watching YouTube, make sure that you're signed in to your YouTube account and make sure that you are signed in to the YouTube account that you have the membership on. So a lot of people sometimes watch YouTube on a computer and then maybe they get a new phone or a new com a new tablet or something and they download the YouTube app and then they set up a whole new account. You don't have to do that. You can log in to YouTube. You only ever need one account. It's like having one Facebook account. Uh, no matter what device you're on, you log in using the same password and email that you use to set up your initial account. And that way, if you set up a membership um, or you got Prime, like if you got, say, a, a premium membership with YouTube or something, make sure that when you are on another device, you're logged in to your YouTube account using the same password and um, email or username that you used for that other YouTube account. So I know that can sometimes be a little confusing for people, but that's the number one reason that people are, no they know they have a membership, but they can't see it. Uh, so make sure you're logged in. Make sure you're logged in using the right account. And you can pop over to the YouTube um, homepage, our channel homepage, and just click on membership and you can see all your information there. And that should, should tell you everything you need to know. I hope it does. That is rows one through 11. So that's the main body of our little ghosty done. Um, I'm just gonna take that tail and tuck it to the inside. I'm not bothering to weave anything in. And we're gonna put this aside. We're gonna make his, his bottom now. We can start stuffing him in a second. So we're moving on to the bottom of the body. So if we're looking at our um, pattern here, this is sort of the middle. It's This is the section called bottom of the body. We are gonna create a little disc that kind of basically gets stitched onto the bottom here. And here we go. So same yarn, same hook. And it's basically the same uh, first three rows as the first part of the ghost. So rows one through three are exactly the same down here as they were to start. So 8, 16, 24. Exact same increasing, exact same pattern. So we start with a cinch circle and we work eight single crochet into that little circle. I'll just put him to the side. So some of you struggle with blanket yarn, some of you don't. There we go. 
So once you have eight single crochet worked into your cinch circle, grab the short tail, cinch it shut, and we start increasing. Two single crochet in each stitch all the way around. There is no joining of the row. We just work directly into what was row, row one, stitch one. I like to work my first two single crochet. I mark that first one with the stitch marker and off I go two single crochet per stitch. I also find when I'm working with the blanket yarn that I start out, you know, working pretty good, but then like I get almost like fatigue. Like, I myself don't feel tired, but my hand is like, can we take a break? So I know that that extra drag created by the slight sticky sort of, I use the word sticky inappropriately. It's not sticky, like tacky. It's, it's just grabby. It's doesn't, it doesn't smoothly flow. It kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to get your hook to come through the stitches. I find the repetitiveness of that can create a little bit of fatigue when I'm crocheting. So taking a break now and then is always a good idea. So that's 16. I'm back around to the first stitch again. One more row of increasing. Row three, two single crochet into the next stitch to start. I'm going to mark my first stitch of the row. One single crochet into the next stitch and repeat. Two single crochet and one single crochet. And like I mentioned earlier, we do have a free pattern for this and we have a tutorial from uh, 2016. Really cute tutorial, has a sweet little animation at the beginning and everything. So if you want to see this sort of more succinctly um, and done with easier to see yarn, <laughs> uh, you can watch that tutorial. And if you want to make it the plushy version like I'm doing, you just have to substitute in the bigger hook and the fluffier yarn. Jewel says she must be the unicorn because she loves the blank yarn. I love it too. I just find I have to take it easy when I'm working with it. I just can't work with it as quickly um, as I can with other yarns that maybe smoothly flow a little bit more. But I do love it. I just love the plushiness of it. I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. Uh, and I like how easy it is to upsize a tr an older Amigurumi pattern without really having to change the pattern. Okay, so that's rows one, two, and three. I did my increasing. This is the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing uh, that I did up at the bottom of this little guy. I'm going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches just to even up the circle. It will not change the stitch count. It just sort of evens it up, makes it a little more circular. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch and I'm going to leave a long tail and fasten off. Um, and the tail is going to be used to sew this bottom to the underside of my little ghost. So that is ghost body, ghost bottom. This will fit on here, but we want to stuff it first. Now, if you are putting on eyes, maybe you've got some safety eyes or you're gonna put on buttons, um, this would be a good time to put those on, stitch them in, um, you can decide what the back of, like where the back side of your uh, ghost is going to be and then just flip it over and then decide eh, to put the eyes kind of in the middle. Um, I'm going to be crocheting eyes, just simple little flat discs, and I'm going to stitch them on, but I'm going to do that after because I can, I'm comfortable stitching onto the surface of crochet. I don't always have to sort of stitch through it. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that afterwards once it's all stuffed. And speaking of stuffing, I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to stuff my little stuffy here, my little stuffed toy before I add the bottom. And I've got a bunch of really silly yarn. I think I'm going to use this stuff up. Um, I'm trying to, I, I never really wound up doing anything that I liked with this yarn. It's, um, this is sort of stuff that predates that uh, they, I think they kind of re-released a version of it where you, you lay it all flat and then you like finger knit with it or something. This isn't set up for that. It's uh, just sort of some bonkers kind of yarn. I think I feel the... Oh, hang on. Aha! This was Burnett Gazoom. Uh, so, I, you know, once again, it was just some crazy kind of 
uh, novelty yarn that they recommended making a scarf out of because that's pretty much all you can do with this novelty yarn. Um, you could also use it to do the edgings on things like this on its own would make a really fun you know edging along something but I'm just going to use it as stuffing because it is soft and fluffy and relatively light and I don't need a whole lot of it. That feels like enough right there. So all I had all that extra yarn, I didn't need it. Better to have too much than not enough. And thanks to the thick nature of the blanket yarn, you can't even see my stuffing or the color of it through there. Love it. So now we're going to go ahead and stitch the bottom on. So you need your big yarn needle and something with an eye big enough that you can get that big thick yarn through it. If you're using multiple strands held together, then yes, you're going to cut a long length for sewing that's all three strands because you're treating those three strands as a single strand. I like to pair up where my little tail leaves off with where I fastened off at the bottom and then you're just literally pairing up each set of stitches and sewing through each set all the way around. There will be 24 in total and uh, if you have to kind of feel your way around with your fingers go ahead take your time Also, if you have more stitches than you necessary or a few stitches less than you sh you're supposed to have, don't worry about it. As long as your, your stuffing doesn't want to leak through and there's no visible gaps, it's just fine. It is, I have to say, kind of satisfying <laughs> to sew with this stuff. This is, uh, this looks like a nice chubby marshmallow at the moment. Oh, Nico's right. We need a pole. Uh, pole for what? Oh, anything. Yeah. Um, we currently have a pole running. It was Jessica Rabbit's idea for the, um, the ad experiment. Oh, oh. Great. So we can end that and start a new one if you like. Sure. I, Nico, did you have a suggestion for What's, a pool? Or is Nico asking about that pool? I'm or I don't sure. know. I didn't realize you had a pool going, so oh, I can't we had see a that. Pool going. <laughs> secret pool. A over secret here. pool. I see. Nico is asking about this pole. So okay. the pole is up. Um, if you were here about 20 minutes ago, we, we ran that little ad experiment. Um, so we were uh, trying to get some feedback here. And we have 115 votes so far. So um, the lurkers, if you were here 20 minutes ago, if you could post um, your vote. And then we'll send this off to Jada. Let's Great. Get, let's try and get another uh, three to five votes here. There we go. So I'm all stitched up. Make sure there's no gaps or spaces anywhere. Oh. Oh, this is squishy fun. I like it. If your bottom wants to squish out, just stuff it back in. Um, I'm going to make a single knot and then I'm going to just pull this tail into the body of my ghost. Because this is such grabby yarn, I'm not worried about it coming undone. I can barely get this to knot. So there we go. Tiny little knot. And then I'm going to stick this through to the middle and pull it out 
And then I just stick my needle in and I wiggle it back and forth, grabbing that tail and hopefully get it to just weave its way in. Just a reminder, um, after the stream, we need to post the most recent um, password for the members web page. The Silk and Vicuña member? Yep, yeah, no problem. I will do that. And in order to get that, so I'm speaking directly to Mary. Yes, Mary, we can see you're a member. Your name is lit up. You have the badge and um, uh, you just need the, the most recent password from the community tab. Uh, you can you can see that it you can always scroll back through if you're a member. Yeah, that's true. You can you should be able to go to that page now. Yeah, and scroll it's not back that far back either. And see it. We just Sometimes updated it. Sometimes you need it. to click on show more. You might not see the whole post. You need to read the whole post, and you might need to click on uh, the show more button. Speaking of members, we've got a membership milestone from Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Lorraine's been a member for 34 months. Thank you, Lorraine. Morning, Jada and General G. I'm awake. I'm awake. It's 6.55 a.m. here down under. Love you both. Hey, we're glad you could join us. It is, uh, it is heading towards the evening here, but it's still just late afternoon, which is lovely. Got some sunlight still coming around. All right. We've got a marshmallow. We've got a big chubby marshmallow. Now the bottom, uh, just squish it in if it wants to pop out on you. Don't worry about it because we still have to put on his little ghosty kind of feet. It's like the bottom of the little, I keep thinking of him as like a, the goat, the, the, you know that old costume where you'd wear a sheet? <laughs> I'm kind of picturing the bottom like that. So we're still going to make this a little part. And we actually do that once we've got the whole thing put together. Um, and we are going to do that working around the last stitches of that bottom piece. So you can stick your hook in right at that edge of that bottom row, right where it wants to come out the bottom. And you're going to be using that sort of stitch, the, the edge of the crochet. You're going to be crocheting around that. It's not as tricky as it sounds. Um, and you can cheat anything if you have to. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to make a slip knot. So slip knot with our blanket yarn. Um, I'm going to slip my hook through any stitch along the bottom edge. Put that slip that little loop back on and then I'm going to just join with a slip stitch. So I've slip stitched to join. I'm going to have a sip of water. And here we go. If you're following along with the pattern, we're at the bottom, rounded bottom edge. So this is the little bit that makes the bottom of him kind of wiggle all the way around. And we've joined our yarn with a slip stitch in the bottom edge of the body. So you're working along like through the edge of the bottom of the body and the bottom piece. We're going to work 24 stitches all the way around. So some of them we skip, some of them we work, some of them we skip, some of them we work. Basically what you want to do is have six little bumps evenly spaced all the way around the bottom of your ghost. So if you have a hard time seeing the actual stitches or where you're supposed to put your hook, just kind of use your crocheter's intuition and I'll explain what I mean. So we've joined with a slip stitch, doesn't matter where. We're going to skip a stitch and then we're going to work um, five double crochet into the next stitch. So if it's difficult to see, it might help to look at the edge of the last uh, the last row. So hopefully you can see this, but there's little bumps. So I can see these little bumps represent single crochets. So if I can't see where I'm supposed to put my hook working around the edge, I'll look for, there's just to the left of this bump is where I joined. So here's a stitch. So I know that just to the left of this bump would be a stitch that I could put my hook through, but I'm gonna skip one and I'm gonna to go to the next one. So just, you know, wing it. I'm skipping one, I'm going to the next one. I'm gonna just slip my hook through there. That feels good. I know that it's solid and I'm gonna work five double crochets through that same place. 
just feel your way around. It doesn't have to be perfect and exact. That's three. And four. And number five. All right, so there's my five double crochet all worked into the same place. I'm gonna skip the stitch, so let's see. The next stitch would be right here. I'm skipping that, I'm going to the next place and I'm gonna slip stitch into that space. So I'm just kind of gonna have six of these all the way around. I wanna make sure they're evenly spaced and I'm gonna do my best to do that. So skipping the next stitch, which feels like it should be about here. So this is where I'm gonna to go to work my next five double crochets. And it'll work out. So that's three. Get some more slack. And five. All right, the next thing, there's that little bump telling me that the next stitch would be just to the left. So I want this one just to the left of that. I'll stick my hook in here and slip stitch. So far, those look fairly evenly spaced. There's a little slip stitch in between. Oh my gosh, this is so fluffy and soft. And this is what I'm going for. I'm going for that little curved bottom that kind of makes me think of an old fashioned sort of sheet ghost costume. I'm going to skip, this would be the next logical place, so I'm going to skip that and go to the next logical place and work five double crochets. That feels good. Next stitch would be right here, so I'm skipping that. I'm gonna slip stitch to into the stitch next to that. Again, looking for even space. There's three done, which means I have the other half to work. That looks like it's pretty much, I've worked half so far. <laughs> it looks so fluffy. <laughs> Wee! Skip the next stitch, going into this one to work five more double crochets. It's a nice slow little progression around the bottom. That is hilarious. So Krista just wrote, now I, ha now I had an ad. Now, that wasn't us. We didn't do that. Wow. <laughs> no. That's from 30 minutes ago. Um, so that's interesting to know. Okay, yeah. Also, I want to um, end the poll so you can read it out. Yes, it's, yes. It's interesting. Hun almost 150 votes. Thank you, everyone. Here it comes. Okay. Also, we are at the hour mark, so okay. I don't know how long you want to go. Oh, to... yeah, we're going to finish this. This the little whole... guy's almost you done. You want to finish the whole ghost? Yeah, yeah. What uh, are you, uh, the Terminator? I'm the Terminator. The I'm the Terminator? I'm the, the Crochetinator. The Crochetinator? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see a YouTube ad? Yes, skippable, 35%. Nope, nothing, 35%. Image stayed on the craft table, 19%. Yes, no skip. Yes, it was a no skip, 9%. 150 of you roughly. Okay, that's really interesting. I love it. Thank you guys so much for the for the feedback. It really helps. We just sometimes we 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 kind of understand what they're getting at, but we don't. <laughs> yeah, it's confusing. Um Krista says um yes, it was a pause for 2 seconds. Like 2 seconds. That's so bizarre. Yeah, that's kind of bonkers. Uh, other people were recording three seconds earlier, and I'm like, three seconds? Huh. 
Okay. Well, it could just be that it was like, you know, hey, we would normally put an ad here, but you're not going to see an ad. <laughs> but we don't have anything. But we have so nothing to show you. back to the show. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you, everyone, for thank you uh, the very feedback. Much. We really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's my fifth one. I've got one more to go. This looks like a little fluffy flower now at the bottom. So skip, it goes right in here. This is gonna be my, I'm anchoring my last five double crochets and then I will slip stitch into the same place that I joined. That's three. Four. Now, like I said earlier, if you paused before stuffing and sewing on the bottom to add buttons or safety eyes, um, your face will be almost completely finished. Uh, if you want to add the little smile, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But uh, just putting the bottom on, if you already have your eyes on, then you're practically done. So we're going to slip stitch into the same place that we started to join. I'm going to fasten off, don't need much yarn. Oh, this is so cute. I love how soft and plushy this is. I'll just give that a nice little tight thing. And I'm gonna take both of these little tails. We're looking at the bottom. Looks like a little fluffy flower. And I'm gonna weave these tails in. So first, the little short one. This she'll probably just pull right in. Yep. And now the bigger one. I'm going to weave through a stitch and then right into the body of the ghost. And I'm going to do what I did earlier. I'm just going to kind of poke my needle out the side. And then I'm going to wiggle my needle back and forth and just pull it in. There we go. There. So now you can take a moment to bend all those <laughs> This is so cute. Bend all those little kind of wiggly ghosty feet down. And he also stands on them, which I think is really, really cute. Nico, thank you, Nico. Nico has just gifted another membership. Thank you so much. Miss Jersey won it. Congratulations, Miss Jersey, and welcome back to the family. Okay. Um, this, let's see, I guess this would be the back of my ghost. So this is gonna be the side that I put the face on. Now, like I said, if you were putting on, sewing on buttons or using safety eyes or something, you could have put them on before we sewed the bottom on. So you'll be, be done that part. Um, if you want to add them now or make them along with me, I'm just going to crochet some nice big circles. Um, so for that, I've got, I'll put this to the side. I'm just going to use some black yarn and I'll just put him over here. And, um, a five millimeter hook, um, any hook that fits comfortably with a size four medium weight yarn would be fine. And there's no real fascinating thing to this. I think I'm gonna just basically follow the same uh, first, th first row, then maybe the second row of the pattern. So cinch circle, eight single crochet, and then for row two, two single crochet in each one, just to see how big this is. And I'm gonna keep holding it up on the face of my little ghost. Um, because I don't want the eyes to be too big, but I don't want them to be too small either. So everyone who's got a birthday coming just passed. Happy birthday to everybody. Yeah. Happy birthday. We have some, uh, birthday people. Happy birthday. So that's eight single crochets. And if I cinch that shut nice and tight. That's a good size, actually. Just the eight single crochet. I think I'm just gonna go with the eight single crochet. All right, eight single crochet into the cinch circle. I cinch it up nice and tight. I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to that first stitch uh, and fasten off. I'm gonna leave a long tail because I'm gonna sew it to my ghost with the tail. And I'm gonna make another one exactly the same. So that's one. Let me just get him to the side. And then I'm gonna make a second the same way. So cinch circle, chain one, eight single crochet into that little circle. There we 
we go. Cinch it up nice and tight. Join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. I know it's black, so it's a little hard to see, but it's basically the first row of the ghost. Done with a smaller hook and thinner weight yarn. And now I'm going to position them on the front of my ghost and sew them in. So let's see. Oh, you're cute. You are so cute. Now, close together, close together is cute. A little farther apart, looks a little derpy. <laughs> I think that's good right there. So I'm going to make sure I need my smaller needle. Did we miss a um, gifted membership from Connie? From Connie? Oh my gosh, did we? We did? I don't oh know. Oh my goodness. Did we? I didn't know if you called it out. No. Did All you right. see it? Thank you to Re Regina for reminding us. I think I might be able to pull that up. Let me see. I can kind of roll backwards. Nope, I can't. No, no, it's it's going to be way too far back. Wow. Um, I, I, I can find it here. Okay. YouTube's made some changes. So let's see. Connie, Connie. Connie gifted a membership. Hmm. There it is. Yes. Oh my gosh. Connie gifted a membership just before we ran the um, the ad experiment. Oh. So a big thank you to Connie. Connie, thank you so much. And I'm so sorry we didn't see it? that. And Robin says she won it. Robin, Robin won. Excellent. Wonderful. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much thank and you congratulations, for us, Robin. Guys. I um. I we guess both we missed, missed it. That one. Yeah. See, this is why we've got the the sharp eagle-eyed awesomeness. The sharp fan crochet family here. Yeah. Nobody misses a beat. No. Except for a scary little ghost that keeps appearing. <laughs> it must be Halloween. Must be Halloween. All right. So. Super sticker. Oh my gosh, country darling, how you doing? Thank you so much. Let's celebrate the first super sticker from Country Darling on this web stream. Thank you so much. And she says, hey, Jada. And I say, hey, Country Darling. Thank you so much for that really sweet <laughs> super chat. I've got two little eyes here. I'm going to make sure that they're both facing right sides up. And I'm going to just sew this into place. Um, so what I like to do is kind of grab the loops of the top facing stitches of the thing that I'm sewing onto. And because these loops of these stitches are so much bigger and thicker than the actual stitches of the little um, eye that I'm working on, I might use sometimes two loops of the same plushy stitch and that's okay. I'm not concerned about my other eye falling off yet because I will reposition it when I go to sew it on anyway. Now you can sew your eyes on anywhere you like, uh, close to the top, in the middle of the face, um, a little bit far apart, a little bit close together. It kind of depends on the, the little look or expression, I guess, you want your ghosty to have. Um, I'm kind of going for an evenly spaced set of eyes. And once I've got that sewn on, I'm going to, I've got quite a lot of yarn here. I might be able to get the mouth out of that. So I'm just gonna poke my needle down if anyone has any questions about the ghosty pattern here, um, do you want to take those toward the end or should we kind of take them? Oh, I can them take them right now while All I'm right. just finishing up here. Because there were a few earlier okay. we didn't get to, so we'll see if anyone has any now. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I also want to let everyone know, everyone who's confused out there, the flashing ghost picture is me. <laughs> I'm the culprit. That is the thumbnail of our little ghosty tutorial for those of you that are would like to watch the, um, I guess you'd call it the in-depth tutorial. It's the, yeah, it's, it's the... And we also have the free pattern on the website. Yes, we have a free pattern for this little guy. We have an actual tutorial for this little guy. And the original tutorial uses uh, medium weight yarn and a smaller hook. 
but of course we're doing the plushy version today so there's no change to the pattern there's just a change to the hook and yarn weight um, it's a fun easy way to upsize an amigurumi um, i really wanted the opportunity to make something cute uh, for halloween and uh, i thought making a plushy version of our already existing amigurumi would be a lot of fun plus it was kind of a nice way to sort of mention that we've got this free pattern and we have new people joining us every year who don't even know we have a website that's full of free patterns and um, we've just had so much um, so much wonderful generous support from you guys lately we really wanted to just remind you that we've got more than 50 free patterns available over on our website plus a ton of other really great crochet resources at jadaandstitches.com so we try to update that fairly regularly if you're into our calendar blankets mr and stitches has a full calendar blanket page just devoted to all of our calendar blankets everything is curated in chronological order so if you're ever looking for something to do with the uh, calendar blankets he's got them all over there really easy to find We've got these uh, a tools page full of really great resources. We've got the free patterns. Um, so if you're new or you've been here forever, make sure you pop over and check that out. That's all free for you to use. And now we've got the Granny Square game headquartered over at our website. So if you want to play the Granny Square game, uh, we've got a page dedicated to that too. And you can play the Granny Square game there anytime you want. So uh, we're sort of working on our... our uh, web page as often as we can so um, we like to take the opportunity every once in a while just thank you all for being such a wonderful part of our community and please avail yourselves of the free resources and patterns that we put out there for you because uh, we make them for you let everyone know we um we just uploaded the the booby cardi um show and tell yes yes uh, we... for those of you that wanted to see the sort of the whole thing that's up on our channel um it should be on the top of the channel one of the latest videos yep that's a, a little a little uh, video lookbook that we put up yesterday. So if you want to see the final finished piece of the Cardi, um, that's there for you. And we linked the entire Crochet Along playlist below if you wanted to look at that um, in that video too. So I've got a little happy face here, a little tiny happy face mouth. Um, I've got a lot of tail left over from my eyes, so I might just use it. Um, I was going to knot my eyes together um, which I still might do. So I think what I'll do is I'll just my my usually what I do is I make like a little oh my gosh it, <laughs> I'm experimenting here. That's cute. That is cute. That makes him look like he's again with those sort of the derpy little look on his face. <laughs> Give him a little mustache. Um, I'm going to pull one of my tails maybe out the bottom. I think I'll pull it out the bottom. So what I would normally do is when I sew on a couple of eyes, I pull both tails out through the same hole, knot the tails together, pull the tails back into the body, and then um, I know that the eyes aren't gonna come off. So it's kind of a nice way to make sure that your eyes are securely sewn in and you don't have to have any outward facing um, knots showing. But I have a lot of this left over and normally I would have just cut an extra length of yarn and embroidered a little smiley face but I think I'm just going to use what I've got left here so I'm going to bring will I have enough I'm going to bring hmm okay maybe I will use this one I'm going to bring this one back out through over here sometimes I just like to be able to use what I've got on hand so these are still the tails of my eyes what I'm thinking is I'm gonna bring them both out I at think the corner. I'm like in the ghost mustache the ghost mustache I've brought them both out at the corners the top corners of where I want the mouth to start and then I think I'm just gonna bring them both down let me see here here maybe here that looks better that looks a bit more like a smile um, yeah, so I'm going to bring them both down kind of on an angle, about one stitch width down, and then I'm going to bring them out, the ends out through the bottom through the same hole in the bottom, which I'll show you here in a second, uh, just so I can knot them together. There is a super chat 
from Great Granny C. She says, thank you, and I say thank you right back. So is this, ah, I don't like that. That doesn't look like enough of a smiley face to me. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna do what I originally planned on doing. I'm gonna bring both ends down through the bottom. I was just seeing if I could make use of those tails while I still had them. I'm gonna bring both of my ends down through the same stitch. So this is a space between the stitches at the bottom. I bring both tails out through the same place. So they're no longer sitting out the front. I knot them together nice and tight. There we go. And then poke that back in and grab it from the other side and pull it into the body of the ghost. And that is how you can surface sew on some little appliques, like eyeballs, <laughs> to something like an amigurumi and not have any outward facing knots. You just use the tails, knot them together, and then pull the whole kit and caboodle into the inside. So now both my eyes are sewn on, the tails completely disappeared. All I have to do is a little, a little mouth now. And I was trying to kind of get it with the tail ends, but I think I'll do what I originally did in the tutorial which is cut a length of yarn. I'm gonna use black since it's easy. Don't need too much. Maybe we should do a poll. I see Wigglebutt suggests that she mouth, likes no, no mouth. mouth. Mouth or no mouth. Mouth or no mouth, guys. So mm. this is what he looks like with no mouth. And then that's what he would look like, sort of derpy. With, with a little smile, which I can embroider on. And you can see it in the little picture. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's that's cute. I feel like the little, the little smile makes him, like, makes him cuter, you know? <laughs> but let's do a pool. Mouth or no mouth? And while we're deciding on that, so if I do a mouth, that's my yarn. In the meantime, let's see how big this guy is. So from top to bottom, if he's standing, oh my gosh, he's so cute. Maybe it'd be easier if I do this, yes. He is six inches, six inches or 15 centimeters. So I was right. I knew it would upsize to about six inches. So now it goes from the original size of four and a half inches or 11 and a half centimeters tall using just the size four medium weight yarn and the G6 hook. That with no pattern alterations whatsoever, just using the bulky weight yarn and the eight millimeter or L11 hook upsizes to six inches. And I think that is a nice size little plushie. Um, gosh darn, that's cute. We are getting some really good suggestions oh, here. Oh, Crooked let me take a look. mouth, smile, round mouth. A round click mouth. Click the oh, like, like button. Yes, maybe we should have the ghosty click the like button. Oh, a round mouth, of course. Yes, saying, ooh, that's Charlie. Good I idea, like Charlie. I, I like that too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, some people are saying no mouth, buck teeth. Mm hmm, mm hmm. A little, a little wiggly mouth, like a, like an anime character. We also have a poll running. Great. Call mouth. Them all lurkers. Please take part in the poll. Little mouth, big mouth, <laughs> no mouth. Kind of a, an O oh mouth. So many little options. It's like, it's like making a little, a little, uh, Emoji. Oh, he's so squishy. I'm definitely keeping this. <laughs> squish, squish. We are getting some fantastic ideas All here. All right, let's see here. Let's see. Let's get to at least 100 votes. We've got a recommended mustache. We need all lurkers. Crooked Everyone mouth. who's lurking or snacking, get over here and vote. <laughs> and ooh. Put down mouth. the chips and the chocolate bar. A mouth and a mustache. Buck teeth. <laughs> a smile. 
A mullet and a mohawk. I am not putting hair on my ghost, you guys. Oh, a mullet. I am in. I vote for the mullet. <laughs> how would I, I do that? I want a mullet on that ghost. How, 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 do you, how do you make it look like he's got a... mullet. Someone says mohawk. <laughs> how about like a colored mohawk, like a punk rocker? What would eyebrows look like? Eyebrows makes him look like... Can we see what eyebrows would look like? Just, just kind of lay the string there. <laughs> that really changes his or, or it totally does depending on the direction you know or he's annoyed or he's a bit concerned or he's he's um a concerned ghost surprised a surprised ghost that would be good i mean that makes sense right i really like the um the round mouth i thought that worked really well yeah i like that too yeah Ooh. um This, now he looks like he's talking out of the side of his mouth. Glasses. Glasses, yeah. <laughs> no mullets, says Lorraine. Oh, come on. <laughs> I love the mullet idea. Oh, we're, at a, oh, we're over 100 votes. Okay, okay here it Yep, let's go. So mouth or no mouth? And survey says... Mouth, 54%. Mustache, 17%. No mouth, 14%. Cowboy outfit, 13%. Cowboy outfit! You mean like he needs a little, a little, uh, um... Cowboy outfit little... would, would mean, uh, like a four-hour live stream. Yeah, he'd, he'd need the little sheriff bag. <laughs> okay, so definitely he's getting a mouth. Okay, so the next question is... So let's do another poll for the type of mouth. Yes, yeah, so another poll. So we're getting a mouth. Is All it right. going to be a smiley face? So we'll say smile... So there's your little smiley face. Round. A round one going, oh. Which can be big or small, I guess. That's really cute. Um, smile or a... Any other ideas? A frown? Oh, a, a wavy, a wavy a little mouth wiggly is mouth. good. This, there's something about this that looks kind of like he's... He's confused or confused something. Confused or he's he's a little bit uncertain All or right. we'll call that wavy. Wavy. Let me see if I can get it to I might what need else? more yarn for this. We got four options here on the poll. Um how about small round versus large round? Well, I that will all depend on like how much space I've got to work with. Okay. And how so I'm gonna say smiley face, round, that little weird squiggle. I'm not sure how to get that to go, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I don't really want to make him look sad, but I guess we could go with a sad face. That's kind of cute. All right. Nah, sad is like, well, I guess. Actually, he, you know, straight, straight across, across. What about really short, straight across? Really short and straight across yeah, yeah. is like he's, 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 he's pursed like, his lips. Mm. He's thinking like, hmm. How about crooked? Try crooked. I think I'm kind of done with the whole haunting thing. I'm not sure. How about Cro crooked? Like crooked? Like yeah. this? Uh, he's like... He wants to leave the party. He's like, yeah, I'm out. Mm, I think straight's kind of cute. Straight's very simple. All right, so we'll say straight. Yeah. That's it. Those are all the options. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes. He's muttering under his breath with the wavy mouth. Yeah. That's exactly what I <laughs> Getting it to be wavy. I know how to do it. I just can't lay it down flat to see it like a preview. All right, let that get to 100 votes, and then we will put in our little our little smiley face or our round mouth or whatever his little mouth is going to be, and then that'll be it. In the meantime, I will tell you that if you want to hang your ghost, especially if you use, these guys aren't going to weigh much, uh, regardless of what stuffing you're doing, um, they really do look cute kind of hanging. So you, you can use fishing wire um, or white thread is fine too. Those are two kind of invisible options. So if you just run your needle underneath the top loop of the first row up here, close to the very center, and a little bit of thread or some um, uh, fishing line, then it'll, he'll hang very nicely. And he makes a cute little, <laughs> cute little hanging decoration. Have him sort of just 
floating just barely above like the table or something. Um, but of course you don't have to hang them if you don't want to. I have hung ghosts in the past and it's, it's always funny. I always think that's cute. Uh, but this little guy will stand up on his little ghosty toes, these little six uh, things. He'll stand on that quite nicely. You could also like flatten them if you thought it looked he looked cuter with them all kind of sitting out around them like a little almost like a little bit of an octopusy kind of look. Um, but uh, I like them sort of straight down because I think it makes him look like like he's kind of fluttering a little bit. So yeah. Some options for your ghosty plush. Gosh he's cute. He feels so soft. I really like the way he worked out here. Great! Nico! Nico has gifted another oh, membership. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you so much, Nico. <laughs> and Mandy has won it. Congratulations, Mandy. Welcome back to the family. So we are going to call that poll. Round Mouth has won with 42%. Wavy was 26. Smile was 22. And Straight was 8. So 42% for a round mouth. Let's give that a go. I'm gonna have a little bit of water here. All right, I think I have enough to do a round mouth. I might not, let me see. I think I'm gonna to need to anchor it in four little places. I think I might need more yarn than that, you know? Okay, I'm gonna cut myself a longer piece just so I can bring my yarn in from the bottom. So I wanna basically put it right here. So I'm gonna anchor it in four places. To get a really round look um, on small something with smaller stitches, you might wanna anchor it at eight places. The more you anchor uh, a circle, the more circular you can get it to look. I'm just gonna bring my yarn in from the bottom and out somewhere up right here. And I'm going to leave some yarn out the bottom for knotting. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to go in the same place that I brought it out. So I've laid down, down what I think is a nice round O. I'm going to bring my needle out. I'm going to try and keep my fingers on this so I can keep that nice round shape. I'm gonna go back through, so you see where I've brought my yarn out. I'm gonna put my needle right back down through the same place, but I'm hopping over top of that O. And I'm gonna go over here. And before I could do too much, so I'm hopping down just a little bit. I'm gonna Make sure I keep that nice round feeling. Oh my goodness gracious, Deanna. Deanna's picked up a couple patterns in our shop. Thank you, Deanna. So this is going to tell me where the rest of my circle needs to go in order to keep it round. So it's always a little bit of fiddling with this. Might need to make my initial circle a little bit smaller. Okay, so far so good. I just want to let everyone know that the um, we're having some tech ish issues here. So the chat box doesn't seem to be working. So I don't know what what's going oh. on. Um, but we'll just continue rolling here and uh, finish up the stream. Hopefully it comes back. Um, can you not see it or like what's... Because I can still see the chat. Is it not... Uh, it might just be my computer because it's, it's just struggling you? to keep up. Possibly. So you're going to have to keep an eye on it there. Yeah, it's okay. We're almost done anyway. So there. That's pretty round. So what I've done is I, is I laid my yarn down in as much of a circular position as I could make it. I went around pulling my needle out between the stitches of the ghost as close to right underneath where that O was lying, 
hopped over top of the yarn that created the round mouth and went back through the same place. So I've done that three different places and I think that looks pretty round. I'm now going to take my needle back through the same place over here and out the bottom where I brought it in. And I'm gonna make sure that that kind of disappears. So now I've got a little like, ah, kind of like look on his face, <laughs> it's so cute. And then same thing with the eyes, I've got two ends to knot together, but because I was embroidering, I'm gonna make sure that I don't pull too tightly as I make that knot because I don't want my embroidery to come out of place. I'm gonna pop that back in, wiggle it back and forth to pull it into the body of my ghost. And then I'm going to double check that I didn't pull anything in my mouth embroidery out of alignment. And that will be the last thing we do. And you can also just trim any excess if you kind of get frustrated with this part. I like to just pull it in because I, I, I save all these little bits of yarn for stuffing anyway, but if I can just use what's already there as additional stuffing in a stuffy, then that's why I like to pull it inside. Might need my bigger, bigger needle for this. I'm just sticking my needle through the side and I'm fishing around inside next to where I think the yarn is and I'm trying to grab it to pull it in. And then I can just do this too. So I'm gonna bring my needle out through the side. There we go. Sometimes bringing it to a new place is all you need to do. There we go. Now, let's make sure I didn't pull his little smile or his little O oh face out of alignment here. Looks nice and round. There. Oh. <laughs> He's in the ghost choir. And if I wanted to, I could hang a little bit of fishing line there. Are there any questions I love about that the ghost guy? <laughs> this uh this is for Krista here. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> uh, Boo! And speaking of, Boo. yes, that is the picture of the, that's the thumbnail for both the tutorial and our free pattern. So please feel free to pop over to our webpage and go to the pattern workshop You'll find this photograph and the little PDF file right underneath it. Click on the file, it'll download to your device and you can print it off. You can keep it in your digital uh, pattern library, whatever you like. I've printed one off here. I like to have paper backups of things. So that's a free pattern for all of you as a big thank you. You guys are wonderful. We have a regular tutorial to back this up. So if you want a quick refresher or you wanna see how we made it using the regular medium weight yarn, uh, we'll make sure that link is in the description box uh, below this as well. We'll probably pin it too if I think to do that. And um, if you want to make a plushy version, which is about 15 centimeters or six inches tall, then size six blanket fluffy yarn here, size six bulky weight, super bulky weight yarn, and an L11 hook. And that's it. You don't have to change anything else. You can use safety eyes if you want, or big buttons for the eyes. You don't have to add a mouth. You can put in a smile like we did in the original tutorial, or you can do a little oh, and hang it if you want, or just squeeze them or give them away as a little gift. It's such a cute little stuffy. I really like this little guy. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little crochet along with us. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for helping us with the uh, ad experiment. We're going to crunch the information you provided us with uh, after today's stream and uh, just see kind of what's up since it's a new feature and we really don't know much about it. We thought we'd give it a try. So thanks all very much for helping us with that. Um, and uh, we'll see you Friday. <laughs> Take care, stay safe, stay crafty. Mr. Stitches, do you have anything you'd like to add? Oh, just uh, bye everyone. Have a great week. Enjoy your little ghosties. I Great. think I'm going to steal that one. Yeah, I think you... I kind of like... I, I like the bigger one. It is. It's fun yeah. when they're plushy sized. Mm -hmm. He's very cute. He's that very soft. Mine. He's soft and squishy. I like him. Yeah. So we'll see everyone on Friday. Yeah. Have a great week. We'll see everybody Friday. Have bye -bye. a great week, everybody. Bye.